How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for renal step one internal medicine surgery to CK, 76 year old woman, found by her adult daughter besides staircase in her house. She has history of alcohol use. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin normal 14 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5 non menstruating women and men, 12 to 17.5 menstruating women. Leukocytes 6,000 normal should be 4 to 11,000. Playlist normal 180,000 should be 150 to 450,000. And then our urine findings we have two plus blood negative protein. Three to four RBCs, pri powered field, zero to two white blood cells, pri powered field. Let's just hop through the answers. What's most likely to be seen in this patient? Choice A, acute tubular necrosis, correct answer. This patient, I've made prior clips on this. It's not dramatic, okay? So this patient has rhabdomyolysis. I made the stem easy, okay? What the US family likes to do, they can give you a youngish or an old patient, doesn't matter. They like to tell you the patient was found beside a staircase. It doesn't necessarily have to do with trauma per se, okay? Patient has history of alcohol use. Alcohol is a risk factor for rhabdo. It's more that they like to make the vignette vague, okay? You just, you have a patient brought in, we don't know what happened, and these are the labs. And the important aspects of the labs here is that we have two plus urine blood, but we're negative for RBCs. Now, some of you are like, OMG, what are you talking about? Negative. Three to four is negative, pri powered field. I've seen this on one of those surgery forms. Okay, so if they want positive, there's no exact number for a threshold. It's just they'll give you a 20, 50, 100. Okay, but if they give you three to four pri powered field, this is incidental. This is negative. Okay, so what we have here is what's referred to as a false positive blood on urine dipstick. That's rhabdo because the dipstick can't differentiate the hemoglobin on actual RBCs versus myoglobin. Okay, so if you do microscopy of the uh, urinalysis showing uh, with light microscopy, you're going to see negative RBCs, okay, despite the dipstick that showed the positivity for blood. All right, so rhabdo, myoglobin is nephrotoxic, it causes ATN. Now, they don't have to tell you pigmented casts, muddy, dirty brown granular casts. I could have given you the same exact question here, and then rather than giving you the false positive blood on your dipstick, I could have just said there's pigmented casts, and then the answer would have been rhabdomyolysis. Okay, they, they like doing that. They interchangeable for these things. Okay, you can get a false positive blood on your dipstick. Answer is rhabdo ATN. Okay, they'll say pigmented casts can just be rhabdo ATN. So let's just hop through the other answer choices here: anemic chronic disease bogus answer choice, wrong fucking answer. Okay, so clearly our hemoglobin is in the normal range. Now, chronic renal disease is probably the highest yield cause of anemia of chronic disease on USMLE. A couple points I can make that are high yield are, number one, you're going to have normal ferritin and a low serum iron. Okay, and another point is that it need not be normocytic. USMLE, especially 2CK NBMEs, will happily give you microcytic anemia with anemia of chronic disease. You just have to look at the vignette. EPO can be used to treat if renal disease is the ideology. Otherwise, you just treat the underlying condition. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Try to see B1 endocrine ratio greater than 20 reflects pre-renal azotemia, wrong fucking answer. Now, I could tangentially quickly make a point that hip fracture in an elderly patient where you have bleeding into the pelvis is a very important cause of hypovolemic shock, more on 2CK, all right? So they'll tell you, 76-year-old woman found beside her staircase, and she's got tachycardia, tachypnea, low blood pressure, and they want you to know that's hypovolemic shock, okay, in terms of addressing the question. BU endocrine ratio for acute tubular necrosis, because ATN is intrarenal, the BU endocrine ratio is going to be under 20. Okay, and then your fractional excretion of sodium for ATN in renal would be greater than 1%. For pre-renal azotemia, I want you to memorize that bioendocrine ratio greater than 20, phena under 1%. It's a lengthy discussion, okay? If you go back a few clips on my YouTube here, I talk about the uh, different pre intra post renal azotemias a bit more. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, epivalent, your wrong fucking answer, as I just harped on. This patient doesn't have hypovolemic shock, even though it's something tangentially we can consider in other vignettes. Wrong fucking answer. 
choice C, subepithelial immune complexes, wrong fucking answer, do the sooner be a flagrant asshole. Okay, so this could refer in theory to post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis PSGN, where type 3 hypersensitivity immune complexes and OMG, they're subepithelial, bunch of garbage. Okay, I mean, you obviously need to know about PSGN. Through the blood and the urine, some of you confused here, you're like, you know, is this PSGN? You're going to have a younger patient. I mean, it can happen in adults. They want you to know if it does occur in an adult, it's got worse prognosis. But it's generally kids with strep pharyngitis. It can be cutaneous as well. That's a high yield point. Cellulitis, erysipelas, and pitigo. And then a week, one to three weeks later, they get red urine. That's PSGN. In contrast, if you have pharyngitis and then you get red urine, one to three days later, not weeks, that's viral infection causing IgA nephropathy. Choice E, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, I'm just gonna make more content building my stuff, scrimmage channel. Appreciate your time, that's it.